Hi everyone and welcome to a, a special Talking Song episode. We have Jonathan with us. Welcome. Hi, I'm excited to be on. So glad you're here. And uh, for, for everyone who's tuning in, I actually don't know that much about your story, Jonathan. You sent me a, an, an email saying that you'd like to be a guest. And of course, I'm so thankful whenever ever somebody wants to share their story. So uh, glad to have you here. And yeah, just feel free to uh, t- uh, tell us, tell us uh, your story. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm sure with other people who have been on the show, they've had similar experiences where they discovered you while they're going through, you know, their battle with insomnia. And then they kind of motivated themselves to get through it so they could eventually come on the show and talk about it. (laughs) So a a little bit of my motivation getting through everything was to eventually be here and have this conversation with you. So actually pretty excited that, you know, it worked out. So. It's um, wonderful. Like just to comment on that, it's, it's the wonderful uh, kind of conclusion where you can you get through it, and then you can tell others so they get through it too, and etc. So yeah, they're very nice, uh, and I'm glad to have you here again. But yeah, sorry, sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, uh, man. So, and I'm sure this is the case with a lot of people um, when they first deal with insomnia. Like it, you know, it's been since almost seven months now since I've really dealt with this and for the life of me, I can't, you know, understand why it happened, like what made it start. It just did. Um, so December 31st, new year's Eve, I was trying to fall asleep. I was with my girlfriend. She was staying over at my place and I just, you know, at some point I realized like, Hey, I'm just rolling around in the bed, you know, not really falling asleep. And, you know, I mean, of course that happens to everyone. And I can think of many times in my life where I kind of just rolled around in bed all night, but I don't remember a specific instance where like, I actually got like zero sleep. Like I, I didn't sleep at all that night, but I, you know, I wasn't too concerned about it. Like the next day, like I'm tried to make it a point to like, you know, do, you know, some extra stuff to tire me out so that I would sleep the next night. Like I had my roommate go and get me like melatonin. I went to the gym. Um, But that second night, you know, that's when, you know, I kind of got concerned because it was the same ordeal again. Like I was rolling around in bed and like, and this time like I, I took like probably 15 milligrams of like melatonin, which I came to later find out that's like way, way too much for the body to even like, you know, process it. And it kind of gave me like, you know, um, like an anxiety attack almost like I had like, like, you know, my heart started beating really fast and it, like it, it just was a general, like it, it sucked. <laughs> um, so the, the night's going on you know, I'm trying everything in my power to like fall asleep. And, you know, like I was listening to like, you know, guided meditations. I was listening to music. I tried listening to ASMR, like n- nothing was working. Um, and then it's like 5 30 6 in the morning at this point like i'm freaking out like my heart is beating like i said i was feeling like i was having an anxiety attack and i was just like is, is there something wrong with me like am i broken like and i ended up calling my parents because like i was really concerned and i wanted to go to the hospital because i like I, I didn't know what was wrong, but I was also really tired and I didn't want to drive. So they came down, my girlfriend came over to my place and they ended up taking me to the hospital. Um, so I'm at the hospital and the doctors, you know, you know, I'm sure like he, he was busy, but he really didn't like, you know, there was nothing that he could tell me to kind of calm my nerves. He was like, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a cocktail. It's going to knock you out. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I took that, went home, passed out for like 17 hours. Uh, and this is when I say my insomnia battle really began. It wasn't when I first couldn't sleep. It was when I like got knocked out, woke up the next day and thought I was fine. But that night I couldn't get back to sleep. I feel like that's when my insomnia battle began. So that's when, you know, that started my whole journey. And, uh, for like the next five weeks, it was just hell on earth. And, it quickly, um, my insomnia battle quickly kind of, you know, started feeding like my anxiety and my o- OCD. And I think that just amplified my symptoms. There were days where I could do nothing but get, I, I could not do anything to get the thought of sleep off my mind. It was like a 
like someone was in the back of my mind, like constantly screaming about like, you know, what, what are you going to do if you don't get to sleep tonight? What are you going to do? Like, how is it going to affect, you know, like your life, you know, the people around you, like just every terrible, like, you know, every awful idea, you know, that could be a consequence of me not sleeping was coming to like my mind and it was hell. Um, I, was lucky enough, however, to find you early on in my journey. I think it was actually that second night when I was kind of freaking out and looking for like something to do, something to like, like calm my nerves, something to explain what was going on. And I found your channel. So I was really grateful about that. Um, I instantly started watching all your talking insomnia episodes, like, and they, they were, so much help to me like there's nothing i could like you know of all the things i tried throughout those five weeks and i was battling with it the one thing that consistently like soothed my nerves was you know watching those episodes getting that hope so thank you wow so i'm super glad and and and, and you know uh first of all i'm glad you know for you and uh and I'm also glad because this is, I mean, it maybe shows that, uh, you know, our channel is, you know, people find it a little earlier on, which is super nice. But going back to, um, you know, your story of like the struggle before we start to talk about like how things get, get easier, you know, um, you, you had slept for like 17 hours, you wake up and it's morning. And are you like, at that point, are you like, oh, good, I slept 17 hours, now everything's going to be fine. Or are you just like, what's what's going on what's happening to me are, were you still super scared and confused so um i when i woke up that day like it i remember like it had snowed over like the night and i didn't even know it was supposed to snow so i was like oh that's cool um but going through that day i was kind of like it was off my mind because i was like oh yeah you know that that's behind me now like i don't have to worry about that anymore and that's why i say that night when I tried to sleep and I still couldn't, that's when my battle with insomnia began. Exactly. Because like, you know, those medications had knocked you out. You slept for many, many hours, but then like, you know, it wasn't over and that's like so scary. Right. Uh, I can only imagine. But it, it, and so you had, I'm, I'm guessing you had another like sleepless night. And then like, did you go back to see another doctor or what, what happened next? So, um, and I guess I should maybe describe like the severity of my insomnia because yeah. maybe that'll put like, put it into perspective of like why I tried so many different things. Um, so when I found your channel and I was like, you know, going through all the talking insomnia episodes, I was getting the sense that like, I was like a severe case because I was listening to people say like, you know, yeah, like I, I get to sleep for maybe three or four hours a night. And like at the time I was like, well, gosh, I wish I could sleep that much. I was going maybe two, three days at a time with zero sleep. Um, I remember it was my girlfriend's dad's birthday and it was like the coldest night of the year. Like the wind chill made it feel like it was maybe like five degrees outside. It was God awful. And I'm like 72 hours into like no sleep. And I'm trying my hardest, like, like we're at like this, fancy upscale restaurant and I'm trying my hardest not to embarrass myself, trying my hardest not to trip and like drop my plate and stuff. And it was just one of the most like awful occasions I can, I can think of and not the dinner, the dinner was good, but like just having to, you know, try to put on a facade that I was okay when I was really just, it was, it was, it was terrible. Um, oh my gosh. I, thanks for sharing that. That means so lot, so much because, exactly what you said it happens people say like oh I, I i don't hear anybody say that they had zero sleep but you know hearing that from you now sure is going to help so many people and just actually staying there a little bit like you you had like three days now like no sleep you're going to this dinner are you, you do you feel did you feel kind of like alienated from other people like you were kind of in your own world and other people were in their own world something like that a little bit yeah what <sighs> It, it's hard to describe and there's like p pockets in my memory that are just gone from those five weeks because like I was I was getting brain fog from like the lack of sleep and like you know I just wasn't able to think clearly like I remember at the dinner for example like I was trying to hold a conversation with my girlfriend's mother and I, I just couldn't because like I, I kept stumbling over my words I kept like 
it, I think the most, like what I felt the most when I was like on a, you know, like it had I not slept for like a day or two at that, like what I felt strongest was like an almost sense of dread and sadness. Like I, I can, I, I've been lucky enough to not ever deal with depression in my life. And I feel like that's the closest I've ever come. It was like, just like a deep, deep sadness in like the core of my body. Like that's what I felt like strongest. Um, wow. It was, uh, were people commenting on like, like Jonathan, you don't seem like yourself or, or, or did they seem like they didn't even take notice of it? Um, so my girlfriend, uh, you know, she was the one who was with me the most throughout those five weeks. And some days she would mention like, Hey, like you really don't look good right now. And, um, and for her sake, you know, cause like I was and this, we can talk about this more later, but I, I was trying my hardest not to like let what I was going through impact other people around me. That was something I was very scared about. So I tried very hard to like, kind of put on a facade, like put on a happy face during that time, even though I was like deeply sad, deeply like in pain. And was that sort of for their sake? You don't, you didn't want to make them upset or worried or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. That, um, so like, I think it had a lot to do with my OCD that I battle with. Like it, my OCD manifested a lot of ways and like how this was going to like spiral out of control and like affect other people's lives. And that like really deeply scared me. Yeah, totally. Here. Now, um, in terms of like, you know, functioning like did you at this stage of your life like during these five weeks did you have obligations during the things days things you had to do or oh it, absolutely i was i i was taking like 15 hours of my college um like 15 course hours and i was working probably 25 hours a week you know as a software engineer so i i can't say i was the most productive during those f five weeks but like honestly i look back sometimes and i'm amazed that i was able like even able to do what i did because like i know how tired i was i know like how like out of it i was and the fact that like i was able to like like i had a test like early february while i was still going through this and i got like an a on it and like i'm just amazed that i got a t like an a on that test because i was so out of it during those five weeks Oh my gosh, it, it, it's, it, it, I think it's, I mean, your, your story is so strong, Jonathan, and, and, you know, hearing that at the dinner, you could hardly like, you, you couldn't keep the conversation going because you were so sleep deprived, but that's, but, but by some, for some reason, we, like, we, we can, we can somehow, when we ha like things we have to do, like tests and work, somehow that energy, like we somehow find it inside us. It's very, very strong because again, it can. You know, when people think uh, I absolutely have to sleep tonight or else I'm going to lose my job and things like that, it's it's just good to know that we have those reserves and it's kind of incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's very incredible. Um, I, I like to attribute a lot of my strength during the, that period to my girlfriend, though. She she was really like my anchor. Like she she kept she kept me grounded. Like I, I don't know where I would be if she wasn't there, like, I'm very thankful for her. And I think, at least for me personally, I think a lot of that inner strength that you deal with comes directly from your loved ones. Like, um, there's uh, that book, uh, the book Man's Search for Meaning. Have you ever read that? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've yeah. actually started reading it. I haven't finished it, but I know it, yeah. So there's a quote in there that I really like, and like, I'm, I'm not going to be able to remember it off the top of my head, but it's basically like, you know, saying that you can live in spite of yourself if you have like someone in your heart that you dearly love. And that was the case for me. Like my girlfriend, like I, I had her support. I like, I knew how much I cared about her. So even in like the worst moments, I was able to like, you know, I, I, I told her this once I was like, I can live in spite of myself if I have you. So like, that's what got me through those, like those really dark periods, those really hard times. Oh, incredible. So, so glad you had her. That's, that's amazing. And now, uh, I think we, yeah, we, you know, you, you, we have a clear picture of like how intense these five weeks were. And, and by the way, before we start again, talking about how things get easier, um, you, you found this talent early on. So I think 
you you probably saw maybe maybe you intuitively saw or you learned here that sort of it can be really tricky when we go down the path of like trying things to make us sleep and things of that nature but but did you did you try a lot of things or or not so much like you know sleep hygiene medications pill supplements and things like that oh i definitely did um i think i found your channel early on and like i even bought your book and like while i found like all of it to be you know you know helpful just in those moments where like it was really hard it was like so hard to tell myself no like it's like you know you're just gonna get through this like it, it was really hard to tell myself that so there were like i went out and I, I got like magnesium like magnesium supplements and like you know vitamin supplements i like i started like i have noise canceling headphones like i started wearing noise canceling headphones to like dead out any sound that would like disturb me while i was trying to fall asleep i um what else uh i i went to like two different therapists and like talk to them like the first therapist like you know basically told me that there was nothing wrong with me and i was like i gee thanks <laughs> uh the second therapist though was like very helpful and she actually was vital you know like very vital and like me getting better um but yeah it was just a lot of trial and error totally here and it, and, and it made me look curious here like the second therapist did she realize this was a form of anxiety or what, uh, in what way was, uh, was she helpful or he helpful? Uh, she was very helpful because she realized that it was my anxiety. It was my OCD. Um, and I think that might be where my case in particular is a little different from other people's because while I'm sure like the base symptoms are like the same, like, you know, like lack of sleep, worried about not getting sleep, like my OCD and anxiety were like very much, you know, like very much like a part of, you know, what was causing me so much stress. Um, yeah. My therapist, uh, she actually recommended me to try ACT, uh, acceptance mm -hmm. and commitment therapy. Uh, and that was like a game changer for me. Um, and we can talk more about that later if you want. But basically, like, throughout the day when I was not sleeping well or I didn't get any sleep like the the prior night like I had like like I said that constant like that voice in the back of my head that was constantly like screaming like like ringing a bell it's like you know like there's something wrong you gotta be on edge and like I would ruminate and I I remember I was at work once and I was like sitting in my cubicle and my coworker was trying to talk to me and like, I couldn't hear what he was saying to me. Like I literally could not hear, I couldn't see what was in front of me. Like all I could like, the only thing I could experience was like the thoughts going in through my head. And then there was another time I was with my girlfriend in my house and I was sitting on the couch with her and we were trying to watch this movie. Uh, I can't even remember what the movie was because I was like, so like, so, so deeply like lost in like these worries, these obsessions. And like my, I think anxiety is like manifests itself in like certain physical symptoms. And like during those five weeks, like my anxiety, like literally made me feel physically sick constantly. Like it, it was just truly awful. And I think what helped me, uh, something that helped me a lot was watching um i think it was your talking insomnia episode 66 with uh andreas yes like you know someone else who was dealing with the ocd and the anxiety like hearing him share his story was like very you know that was another like vital moment for me because like at that point i was like i feel like i'm the only one who has this like combination of symptoms like of ocd anxiety anxiety like in severe insomnia and hearing that someone else you know not only was dealing with this but had like you know used your methods somewhat to like get better was like you know it, it put me at ease so glad you found that one it's a very strong episode just like yours and, and and now just again for the for everybody who's tuning in here can you mention some of the like you know physical sensations you you experienced at the time yeah i so i i've heard like i when I was going through insomnia, like at first I was always looking up the symptoms to see like, you know, what it is I could be dealing with. And I was lucky enough not to like really experience like any hallucinations or anything. That was one thing I was really scared about. I was like, if I, if I start hallucinating, like I'm literally going to lose it. Like I'm going to lose my mind. 
but I never dealt with that. But I did deal with like, you know, the, like the constant headaches, like, you know, that deep sadness I was telling you about. Um, like my coordination was a little like off. Like I, I was like stumbling a bit. Um, the, the, oh, one of the weird symptoms was uh, that, and I, I guess this was attributed to the brain fog. Like I, I couldn't think clearly. Like I, I could, I could tell that like you know when I was okay. Like you know I could like make this conclusion faster. But like when I was like so sleep deprived, I would like stumble around in like my own thoughts until like you know I'd, I'd arrive at the conclusion, and I was like, like what am I even doing? Like I, I would just get lost in thought because I was so tired that I couldn't think clearly. Um, another one that I dealt with. Uh, and this wasn't really like a physical symptom so much as like it was something that was always on my mind. Um, and I, I wanted to bring it up because it wasn't something I really heard anybody discuss. And I wanted to just say it. So if someone else experiences this, they're not alone. I had this like, I had this, you know, I was always like idealizing the past before I dealt with this. I was like, oh, if I could just go back to that, like I was constantly like thinking about like the good times, even though they, they probably weren't good. They were just an average like, you know, day or an average week. But, you know, I wasn't dealing with this. So I was constantly like romanticizing like, you know, the weeks and the months prior to when I started dealing with my insomnia. And like that was constantly on my mind. I was like, oh, you know, that was so good. But, you know, in actuality, it probably was just like an, a normal day that I otherwise wouldn't have remembered. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, can totally, you know, totally see that happening. Um, the, you know, the normal days seem like they were magical when we we're in like this intense struggle. Wow. It was okay. So, I think we yeah, again we have a clear picture of like how intense the struggle was and everything that happened. And <clears throat> um, when or when slash how would you say that things started to get a little easier? So uh, I, I think I've heard the sentiment before on the show, but it, it kind of just at one point it kind of just got better. Like I, I don't know why it started getting better, but it just did. Um, yeah. And that was about, that was around that five week mark. Um, so at the time, like I was seeing my therapist and she was very like, you know, very adamant on me going and talking to a psychiatrist. She thought that with my combination of like anxiety and OCD, like I needed to be on like some form of medication. So I went and talked to my psychiatrist. I went, and I found a psychiatrist and I went and talked to her and they put me on mirtazapine. Um, and this was all under like, you know, like I was very, you know, adamant when I found my second therapist that I didn't want to like go through like CBTI because like I had heard so much from you and from other people that it just doesn't work. Like Andreas's episode, for example, where like I heard his horror, like his horror story about like trying to force him not to sleep. Like I, I did not want to deal with that. So like I tried to make it like you know, a focus point that I wanted to address the anxiety and the OCD and not the insomnia itself. Because if I addressed like the anxiety and the OCD, I feel like the insomnia was going to like improve over time. So my therapist, you know, we, we focused on that, but she told me to go to a psychiatrist, told me to get medicated because she firmly believed that for people with OCD and with moderate to severe OCD, which she said that I had, that it was, you needed to be on medication to get the best results. So um, I'm not recommending that everybody go on mirtazapine, but if you do find yourself with a mixture of like anxiety and obsession or OCD like symptoms, like it might be, you know, the best option for you because it definitely was for me. And after I got on the mirtazapine, it was actually funny, like a couple of days before I started going on the medication, like I noticed that my sleep was getting better. But like, as soon as I got on the medication, like it, it, it was like pretty much smooth sailing from there. But I, w I don't think it was the mirtazapine that really helped me sleep. It was more like the mirtazapine got the obsession of sleep off my mind. Like I no longer thought about it throughout the day. And I think that's one of the, like the telltale sign that you're still dealing with it. Like if you're still constantly thinking about it, like it's probably going to lead to you when you're trying to sleep that night. Like you've thought about it all day. So like you're very like you're like anticipating that moment and it just keeps you up because you're so like, you know, riled up. Absolutely. I, you may have heard me talk about the, have you heard me talk about the delegation? 
Um, familiar at all? I, 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 not to my mind. No. No, it's, 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 it's good. We'll just take it like a one minute. But basically, you know, like I, I think of the fundamental truth when it comes to sleep is like the more we try to sleep, the, the less we sleep. Like the more struggle we have, right? And and oftentimes, if we take anything, like for example, mirtazapine, and we sort of think like, okay, good, this will take care of sleep for me then automatically we're not going to be trying to sleep. We've delegated the presumed work of sleeping to something else. And then there is no effort to sleep and it just happens by itself. It's really sort of magical, that delegation. And, and I think, yeah, I think it's, it's not really about the chemical so much is my opinion. It's about like delegating. So that's, that's how I look at it. But I don't know. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I think when I went on mirtazapine, I did it with the assumption that like, you know, this is to help with the other side effects of like insomnia, like not necessarily with the sleep itself. And they like my psychiatrist said, like, it's supposed to help you sleep. But honestly, after like the second day, like I feel like I kind of didn't have like any, you know, effect. Like I didn't feel the sleepiness from it at all. Like I would take it like around at 9, 10 p.m. And like the next day, like I would get sleepy at like. 3 p.m. But yeah, like yeah. then like, after like two days that was gone though. And but I like I said, I don't know why it got better, it just suddenly did around that time. And I, I've stayed on the mirtazapine and I think that's helped and been helpful to a lot of other aspects of my life. So um but yeah, uh it's been I think that was like February eighth, if I remember correctly. I started that. Mm -hmm. And it's been smooth sailing ever since. So it's so wonderful. And, you know, um, it, 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 exactly you said, it often happens like that. We don't, <clears throat> we don't know why exactly, but for at some point, sort of everything we actually have learned, even when we've been really scared, it sort of coalesces. It's sort of like it clicks. It kind of, everything we've we learned about like, you know, not resisting, like uh, be willing to experience discomfort and things like that. It certainly suddenly coalesces and, and we find more peace, you know, by itself like that. So, uh, super nice to hear that. Now, um, <clears throat> you said it was pretty smooth sailing after that, which to me signals that there weren't that many like speed bumps, but maybe you had some or did you, did you, or did you not? Yeah, I definitely had some speed bumps. I think it was like when I first started watching your channel that kind of put me at ease. So I was like, oh, you know, there's like a system for dealing with this. And that kind of like put me at rest for a few days. And then I noticed like about a week after I found your channel, like, I had two nights in a row where I slept perfectly fine. And then I think I had an immediate speed bump after that. Cause I was like, Oh great. I like, I figured it out. And then I obviously didn't. And then it got like even worse for a little while. Um, so I've had, you know, a couple nights, you know, ever since I've like, I really got past this where like I didn't get any sleep, but I wouldn't call those speed bumps more. So like, I feel like I, I was cured after like I had this moment, I think it was probably like March or April where like I was trying to sleep and like, I've recognized that like, Hey, like, you know, I'm not falling asleep. Like I usually do, but like, I didn't feel anxiety about it. I was like, well, you know, that's whatever. Like, like I, I don't control that. You know, I'll just sit here in bed until something happens. And like, I didn't feel any dread about it. Like I would previously. So I feel like every time I've had trouble sleeping since, you know, like February, like I, I just don't fear it anymore. Yeah, no, I, that's, that's amazing. So I'm glad to hear that. And to me, like you, you may have heard me say this, but when people ask me, like, do you think I, I have this, like, am I immune to insomnia? Like, am, am I completely past it? Like to me, it becomes like, okay, what is your reaction if I say there's nothing you can do to control sleep or there's nothing you can do to make yourself sleep. And if somebody says that scene sounds okay, then to me, that's it. That's, that's it. That, that's not going to be any struggle. If somebody says that's scary to me, then I'm like, okay, maybe you need a little bit more work, but yeah, it's, it kind of echoes what you said there. So that's, that's amazing. And one thing that came to mind, I was like, um, you know, from March, something somewhere in that, you know, March time frame, things have been quite, quite a lot easier. Did you, did you, did you wait a couple of months before you like, uh, sent me this uh this email or did you would you want to like um because you didn't send it back in march did you want to wait a little bit first yeah no i so uh life kind of got in the way and for a little bit like i was busy you know like you know i guess like 
with my ordinary life, not dealing with all this stuff. And then I, I think it was like three weeks ago, I had like a night where I didn't really sleep well. And like, I maybe had like a thought in my mind. I was like, oh, well, what, you know, what if my insomnia came back or comes back? And then I've slept and I woke up the next morning and I was like, huh, well, that's neat. So I was like, okay, at that point, I think it might be worth reaching out to you. Cause like a little hurdle that I got past, but I was like, yeah, you know, I feel like, you know, that solidifies it that I've gotten past this. Yeah. No, that's wonderful. Because I, I just, I just reminded me of, because a lot of people tell me like I've waited so, so and so many months and I think I'm ready, something like that. And I'm so glad you, uh, you know, you saw that you were ready to share this and it's going to mean, you know, so much to the community to hear this. And I just have maybe two more questions, which is, um, uh, you know, often we can see that, uh, you know, get, get, getting past the, through the struggle, we can learn things that apply in other areas of life. You know, have you seen anything like that? Oh, absolutely. So this is going to tie in with, uh, with the ACT that I was telling you about. So when I was going through this and I was beginning like, you know, acceptance and commitment therapy, like there was lots of little things that like I was trying to like constantly like instill in myself. And those things that I instilled in myself have definitely paid dividends in like all aspects of my life. So one thing that I personally would do and, um, gosh, I can't believe I'm forgetting the name of the book, uh, now, but I read this book by like a, a well-known ACT, you know, therapist. And like, there was like tons of little like tips and tricks and like, you know, things that you could actually apply to your life. And I was like doing everything that I could to apply those like to like my insomnia battle. So whenever I would have like a thought about like not sleeping or like how sleep would affect like, you know, my day-to-day -day life and the people around me, like I, what I would personally do, like, I would first acknowledge the thought and then I would just like be like, thank you, mine. Like, you know, thanks for trying to like, you know, look out for me, but I don't need it. Like I'm going to be okay. And it was doing stuff like that and like going to my therapist and like talking about like, okay, like how are these obsessions? Like how, how, how do I deal with being okay with not being okay? Like, I think in this book and you said this earlier, like there was this like, passage has said that you know the root of all suffering is trying to avoid suffering like once i got through my mind that like you can't you can't be like a human you can't live on this earth without going through like some amount of pain like it, once you accept that once you're okay with like going through that pain like th that was like very you know that was another like big moment for me like really trying to hone in on that being like okay like there's nothing i can do there's nothing i can do in the situation to like make me sleep there's nothing in the situation i can do to take away the pain of not sleeping all i can do is respond to that so once i you know it was through a combination of therapy and like you know just constantly trying to apply it while like you know i was doing any little thing like from like my day-to-day -day life like at one point, I, it, it just really started working for me. Amazing, wonderful, and, and uh, I, just by coincidence, was it the happiness trap? Yes, that was it. Yeah, oh, that was the one. Yeah, yeah, I think it's one of the most common ones. I love that book. I, I, I would shake the author's hand if I ever saw him. <laughs> <laughs> they, they helped me out so much that, but. Amazing. I think, uh, and just for an example of like how those, like the things that I learned through battling insomnia has applied to like other aspects of my life. Like with my girlfriend, for example, like whenever, you know, like we're going through a tough patch, like I've just learned to be like it, you know, like all the worries, all the stress, like I, like, I don't try to force those out of my mind. I don't try to like, you know, be try to like, think about like affirmations or try to make myself happy like i just recognize it like hey you know like sometimes things are hard and that's okay you just gotta like you gotta deal with it and, like and if you feel sad you feel sad there's nothing you can really do about an emotion or a thought that comes to your mind like it's all about how you respond to it 100 percent, amazing and now um i guess uh final question here is uh 
if you could, you know, say something to yourself when you were in those like five intense weeks of, of real struggle there, what would you, what would you tell yourself? That's a good question. Um, don't panic. Yeah, um, there's, there's very little you can tell somebody who deals with anxiety or with OCD or anyone who battles with insomnia uh, while they're going through it. There's very little you can say to them to like make them think that like the world isn't about to end. Like you're just constantly on edge. There's a million different things that you're worrying about, but like sometimes you got to fake it till you make it just, you know, try to tell yourself, like, I tell myself, like, don't panic, like, try as hard as you can, you know, just, you know, keep going through everything. And then eventually, you know, you'll get past this, your body is not going to stop. Like your body is going to eventually going to need its sleep, like, you didn't forget how to sleep. That's not something you control. Yeah. Well said. And, uh, you know, maybe just a final thought from my end, I heard um, uh, our, our coach, our fellow coach, coach Alina, I just listened to one of her YouTube videos when she said like, sometimes, you know, our brain is on this path of like problem solving, which is actually why we're in such a struggle. It's like really trying to figure out what's going on. And it's like tr experimenting, trying this, trying that. And as you said, we can say to a person or the brain that's like, don't panic, but it's, it's hard because it's, it's in the survival mode. And sometimes it's almost like you have to okay, it has to run its course. It has to go through all the experimentation, all the trying, all, all that it kind of, kind of burn itself out, if you will. And then finally sees like, yeah, there really isn't anything I can do to control this. And sometimes maybe that is why we have this kind of magical moment after five weeks or whatever time frame it is when it sees like there is nothing there to control and then suddenly things get easier. So I just came to my mind as well. Does that make sense, Jonathan? Yeah, no, I actually remember watching Alina's episode. Uh, I think it was the first one you and her had. And she said basically along the lines of that, if I remember correctly, she was like, you have to go through all the options to realize that like you don't really have any options other, <laughs> <Right>. than, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> other than doing nothing. Yeah. Wow. Well, we'll end there. It's a perfect, perfect place to end. Uh, super insightful. And uh, yeah. Just want to thanks again, Jonathan, for, for bringing hope, inspiration, insight to the community here. Yeah, no problem. And I'm, if there's anyone out there who finds himself with like a situation similar to mine, just know that when I was going through it, I thought there was no hope. And obviously I was wrong. So best of luck to you. Perfect ending. Thanks so much, Jonathan. Bye for now.